Hey, hi. The Bible says God laughs. Throughout the Bible, there's evidence of God's delight and God's pleasure and God's joy. Have you ever thought about this? Nah, probably not. can't picture God laughing out loud, right? I know. Such a statement sounds very uh, irreverent, doesn't seem to match the seriousness of the Bible. For many, thinking of a joyful God is uh, uncomfortable. So when you think of religion, when you think of spirituality, what comes to your mind? Maybe a couple of serious men and women formally dressed, saying some prayers, reading a book of rules, never showing any trace of joy in their faces? Well, I think this is something we should talk more about, for it can be confusing. Seriousness and joyfulness are not contradictory. Both are necessary. When you are joyful, you don't necessarily have to stop being serious. And when you are serious about something, this doesn't mean you can't have joy in your life. According to the Apostle Paul in Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit has some uh, essential characteristic, one of which is joy. Because of all the seriousness and the reverence with which we address God, which is the right thing to do, I think after all He is the creator and redeemer of all reality, we often think of God as someone angry or sad and disillusioned with the human scene. There are moments when God shows such feelings, but the Bible always makes a point that God's joy is much greater than His anger. He is a joyful God who rejoices in our joy. This joy of God is revealed even in the Old Testament. We may be deceived into thinking that God is very angry or demanding sacrifices to appease His wrath. While reading carefully, we see that in many biblical accounts of sacrifices, God required only a symbolic portion. So what did the people do with the rest of the food? A party! Wow! Yes, take another look at what God-given command on sacrifices was usually like. Then eat with your families and rejoice there in the presence of the Lord your God. However, every time the word joy appears in the Bible, both in the Old and New Testaments, its meaning goes much deeper than just laughs and smiles. Joy is different from happiness, you need to know that. We all know that life is not and will never be easy, but nobody or nothing can take God's joy out of your heart. If you have already been redeemed by Jesus, have declared Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, the joy of the Lord is dwelling within your heart and no one can take it from you. It is a reality that can only be provided through God. There's a massive difference between joy and happiness. Many do not know that joy is a biblical word, kara. The biblical joy refers only to God's action. It is a reality given by God through the Holy Spirit. So only those who have already confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior have this joy. Only those who have the Holy Spirit dwelling within them can feel this joy. This is, this is a biblical and theological truth. Happiness, on the other hand, is different. Happiness does not refer to a condition, but to a fact, an event, or a particular action. When you make a new friend, you feel happy. As well as when you go to movies, or to a birthday party, or when you go on vacation, or when you receive a gift. All these things bring happiness to you, which is excellent. And that is why we love them. But happiness is only for a while. Because all these things are transitory. Happiness is good, but it's momentary, fleeting. On the other hand, joy is lasting. 
Why? Well, because joy comes from God. Only God can give you kara. Only God can give you joy. Joy does not arise from human achievement. It comes from the presence of God in your life. Joy is the assurance and confidence that tells you it will work, even when you feel that the battle is almost lost. I'm sure you've been through this experience many, many times. Everything around us tries to convince us that joy comes with money and fame and success or a good job or an excellent vacation in a good hotel or friendships or entertainment. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love many of those things, but none of them brings real joy. We know that these things are lovely, but they don't last forever. The New Testament teaches us that Jesus came to be our sacrifice. Now, when we repent, we can enter into the presence of God and receive the joy of salvation. That's joy. That's the joy that is with us on good and bad days. When we understand that biblical truth, we no longer need to be afraid that joy will run out. Even in the sadness of these terrible days when we are witnessing a health crisis throughout the world, God gives us joy. Joy is profound, but it doesn't always come with a happy face or a big smile. Joy helps us to overcome pain and suffering. Sadness will pass, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy that Paul mentions in Galatians belongs to the fruit of the Spirit. It doesn't have its origin in human fulfillment, but in the power of God through the name of His Son, given to us through the Holy Spirit. This God-given joy is not just a passing feeling. It's a gift from the Lord that shines in the darkest night and stands firm in life's most severe storm. Joy reaches each one of us directly from the throne of God's grace. The person of Jesus, who is the Christ of God, is the final revelation of the joy of the Lord that strengthens His people. He is our eternal joy, the hope that will never end. And that is why, even when in jail, Paul also said, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. So, rejoice. God is the God of joy. All the best to you and your family. Bye now.